Okay, right now we're, we're into the Grenache, which is a, uh, we passed the Syrah, there's about an acre of Syrah. Uh, we're into the Grenache grapes now. The ones you're looking at that have grapes on them, I think I were actually planted uh, in spring of 09, so last year. Uh, this field was looking fabulous last year. We, we planted about 3,600 plants in spring of 09, April of 09, and we had a very warm fall. Uh, the field looked like this the first year, they looked great. We were excited that we were going to get a, quite a bounty of second year grapes from this, from this uh, Grenache and the Syrah. And our, low, our previous low temperature for the entire fall had been in the 40s. And one night it went from the 40s to 22 degrees. And all these little babies who were pushing their guts out uh, got frozen. They still were still full of moisture. Typically, uh, as, the, as fall onsets, the plant starts to get signals that it better start taking care of itself and it pulls its moisture and its carbohydrates down to its roots and it gets it out of the, the actual vine. Well, if the vine is still too filled with liquid and it gets 22 degrees, you can imagine what happens. It's like a test tube full of water that uh, freezes and shatters the, the test tube. So we lost about 2,500 plants. I mean, just stone cold dead that night. The vineyard went from looking like this to totally brown. Typically the leaves change like the trees. They get yellow and red and they're beautiful, uh, but they, they didn't do anything. They went from green to dead dark brown in one night. And so a lot of what you're seeing here in these areas is, is replanted plants. You'll see some that are very small, like over here. You can tell those are first, those look more like the Viognier, don't they? Uh, because they were planted, replanted this year. The ones you're looking at now with the grapes on actually survived, but they, they got burned all the way back to the root. But they came out this year and they still produced fruit. There's very little fruit in this whole section of vineyard. Uh, most of the plants that did survive didn't fruit this year. They had to revegetate, but the roots, the roots survived. But the, ones you're, the few you're looking at here are, are Grenache grapes. And we're just going to leave them on here until we pick the Petite Syrah. There's not enough here to do anything with. So we'll probably just throw it in the vat with the Petite Syrah and have a little bit of a field blend. But there's only about 100 plants out of 3,600 that had fruit this year. So that was pretty devastating for us. Uh, plus the fact that we're waiting to plant out the rest of the vineyard based on what we like. We've got four, four good varietals in, and we're going to see how they did, see what they tasted like, see what kind of wine they made, and then focus on that the rest of the vineyard. Well, by not getting anything here, we lost a year, not only of revenue from the grapes, and not only from the costs of replanting, which are exorbitant, but also we lost a year of research. So it was a bad, bad moment for us to go through that. But it's farming. That's what happens. And so you live with the good, you live with the bad, and you, and you just swallow hard, get over it. Cry a little bit, get up the next day and have a glass of wine. <laughs> so uh, so what, what you're looking at, if you want to pick some grapes, they're, they're clean. Uh, if you want to taste them, please feel free to. Uh, I, I taste these grapes, and they're the best tasting grapes I've ever had in my life. They taste so good. There's so much flavor to them. Uh, to keep in mind, they're not store-bought grapes. They're not made to be eaten. They're made to be drank. So we don't, we don't try to make them look pretty or shiny. They're full of seeds. Uh, the skins are tough, and that's exactly the way we like them, because those skins are what's going to give all the color and flavor. But uh, so this is a this is a second year field intermixed with first year plantings, and hopefully next year, if we don't have any uh, weather calamities, this will be a very high producing Grenache field, and we think Grenache is going to be a superstar grape for this area. Uh, we think it's versatile, it's tasty. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to make, and you can make it in a lot of different styles, which is what keeps me interested. Yeah? Does the size of the grape make any difference as far as the flavor or the ingredients that you're looking for? Not typically. You're going to get a very, very uh, wide array of grapes from this field. Like when we pick, uh, we, we look at the, that's the sugar content of the grape when we decide to pick. Uh, the sugar content uh, d deals directly with how much alcohol that wine is going to have in it. It also means that the longer you keep it on, the more flavor it tends to pick up. So there's a balance between making, making a uh, port, which will blow your head off, and picking too, which will, or picking too, too early so the fruit hasn't had a chance to really develop inside the grape. So the grape size really doesn't matter because they're going to be all over the lot. You'll see little ones, big ones in one bunch. You'll also find different levels of ripeness in a bunch, and sp especially out throughout the whole field. The whole field 
reacts differently. They have little microclimates in here. So what we do when we get ready to pick is we'll go through and do a, a bunch sample from the entire vineyard. We'll cut a bunch off here and we'll go down 25 feet, cut another bunch. We'll, we'll smash those, mix them all together, and take a reading from that. And that'll be a true, re true reading of what the field's actually going to show when we go through and pick the whole thing. So we'll, we measure this in what's called BRICS, B-R-I-X, and that's the ratio of sugar to water inside the grape. And for a, for a Grenache or a Syrah or a Petite Syrah, we're probably going to be looking at around 25, 26, 26% BRICS, degrees BRICS. Uh, so we're looking for that overall uh, number. We're going to pick grapes that are going to be 20 and 21. We're going to probably pick grapes that are 30. But what we're looking for is that overall average BRICS to bring the grapes in to, to do the style that we want to do. And so uh, th these grapes are probably going to be at their 25, 26 bricks in about two, three weeks. Uh, they probably taste pretty sweet now, but uh, we want them even sweeter than that. And uh, like te I tested the Petite Syrah this week and it was 17 and a half bricks. So it's probably got two, three weeks more to go, all depending on the weather. If we get warm, sunny days like this, they'll ripen faster. If we get cloudy days here, uh, they'll ripen more slowly. We get here from the mountain, like what I call the reverse California effect. And in California, they're famous for their foggy, cool mornings and hot, sunny afternoons and cool nights. Well, we get the monsoon here, so we get warm, sunny mornings and cloudy, cool afternoons. So we have a little bit different, but it's, a, it's typically the same temperature ranges you're going to see uh, in a Napa Valley or Sonoma County and here. Uh, so it's, it, we think it's a really interesting microclimate. And the weather doesn't even get down off of this this, lent, this bench here. We call it the Chiricahua bench. I've left here in the, in the summer and it's been 72, 73 degrees, got down to Mustang Mall where you turned on 181, 191, and it's 92, 93 degrees. So uh, it's, we think it's a unique microclimate here that's, that's really gonna be advantageous for growing the grapes. Any questions? Oh, I had a question earlier. Uh, what did we put in the soil? How do we prepare the soil? Uh, we come through with D9 caterpillars and rip it. This has never been tilled before. Uh, if you can see the field next to us or anywhere else, that's what it looked like. It was a mesquite bog. So we had to bring in heavy equipment, pull out all the mesquites, and then rip, r double, triple rip the land to get it broken up. And then we added uh, cow manure uh, by the ton and, br and worked that into the soil. And that, that's the only organic matter or any prepar prepar preparation we put into the soil was was organic uh, matter, matter from the cattle, cattle manure. So uh, very minimal. Uh, the soil is very fertile as it is. Uh, every, every, grape, every plant needs nitrogen, and that's what the, uh, the, the cow manure will bring to us. We're going to start a composting uh, process this year. We're going to start adding back to, this, to the soil, uh, mixing straw and, and uh, organic matter uh, to, to, to every three years to continue to strengthen the soil here. Uh, I've never seen uh, a good bottle of wine from bad grapes. I've seen some good, bad bottles of wine from good grapes. You can sure screw them up, but unless we take care of this field, it won't, it's not going to take care of us. What we get back from the, from the wine processing process is called a cake. And it's a very, very dry and hard uh, matter that's made up, that makes up, made up of seeds, skins, and pulp. By the time the fermentation process is gone, the pulp is pretty much gone. Uh, the alcohol eats it up and it turns, it, it turns from pulp to juice and there are some solids left. The majority of the cake is seeds and skins. And uh, so when we, when, we, when we finish pressing the wine, we'll have that cake and we'll, we'll, we're, we're going to build a composting area uh, for that. We have, we have not produced wine yet here. We produced our wine at Keeling Schaefer because this building wasn't done. But when we start pressing here, we have a, we'll have a compost pile that will start spreading into the field as we get enough of it. Yeah. Are your rows numbered to make your analysis more efficient? Absolutely. Each row has a number on the end here. And when we have a, uh, a sprinkler leak or anything like that where we need attention, we're able to identify uh, where it is and uh, where certain grapes start. We have different clones of grapes in here, which means uh, when we pick a Syrah, we also have to pick what kind of Syrah. It's kind of like if you, if you want to plant roses, you have to pick a peace rose or a... Uh, a Tropicana or whatever your favorite rose is, you have to pick that too. So when we select our, our, uh, our grape varietal, what, and that means a Syrah, Grenache, Viognier, or Petite Syrah, we also pick what clone we think is going to go best here. We also pick the rootstock. 
And so when we decide on our, the kind of grapes we want to plant, we also decide on the rootstock, and we, we order them up, and they, they graft a rootstock to the top of the varietal cane. And, so when we, and, and then a year later, you get your plant. So you have to order your grapes a year and a half in advance. We get that little root and that little, that little varietal stalk, and that's what goes in the ground. If you lift up one of those tubes, you'll see what was originally in the ground and where the plant came from. It's only about a foot tall. And so that's, that little guy's got to struggle and get out of that tube and get up on its wire before it can do anything for us. So we also have the rose number to identify which clones are which, because we want to identify which ones we like best. And then if the ones we really like, we'll plant more of it. And that's what I was telling you, we lost a year of research based on, our, on that freeze last year, because now we, we're not sure what we want to do next. So we're going to sit it out a year and try to get this thing back to health, and, and that maybe after next year we'll know exactly what we want to do with the rest of the property. Vines survive uh, the freeze better after a couple of years? Yeah, the, 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 the Petite Syrah that we planted a, a year prior was un, unimpacted by the freeze. It was just those new guys that were still tender and still naive. They, they didn't know to, to protect themselves, and so they got, they got hammered. We're hoping to never have that happen again, but if it does, by the time we get our vineyard more mature, I think it'll be able to withstand it a lot more. Yeah, you gave us a real clear understanding of the impact of weather. What about the impact of animals or birds? Uh, good, good question. We have, uh, the interesting thing about this place, since grapes have never been grown here before, we're learning about who likes them and who doesn't. Uh, there's a lot of animals, birds, insects in this area, uh, and we have to watch out for all of them. I've turned off the bird guard, but when, when some of you got here, you might have heard this screeching, squawking noise. Uh, that is a sound of a bird being disemboweled by a hawk. <laughs> and it makes it very unappealing for many birds to come in and, and experience that. So, so we keep that running dawn to dusk while the, when the grapes turn, start turning purple and they start looking tasty to the birds. They don't mess with them when they're green. We also have bees that like the sweet grapes and when they poke a hole in the grape and it ruins it. Yeah. We also have wasps that also can, can decimate the field. So from time to time we do have to spray, uh, spray the grapes uh, with a very mild uh, deterrent uh, for the insects because they, they can wipe out the entire vineyard if, if they're unchecked especially the bees. Uh, they, they can get a couple hives going in here in the creek and they multiply unbelievably fast and they can really do a lot of damage. As far as uh, the, the birds, that guard keeps them away pretty much. Uh, we do have some pesky quail that like to come in the vineyard and have dessert, uh, but there, there's not enough of them to do a lot of damage. You, you gotta chalk it up, you're gonna lose something. Uh, the key is to minimize the damage and the loss to, to, the, to our neighbors that come into the vineyard. We have a vineyard foreman who uh, we, we split between Rod and our place. There's not enough to do full time year round for, for one person to do one of these places. So uh, we, have, we also have a crew that we bring in for picking and for like when we have to do chopping of weeds, major things out in the field, planting. We bring in a crew to do that, but we have a foreman who's very well versed in the, in the wine grape growing uh, procedures that looks after the place for us. Well, we try to get down here as much as we can. Okay, let's move on down to the, to the Petite Syrah. This is the exciting part because we're actually making wine off of this place down here. I'll tell you a little bit about that and then we'll head back.